Yeah, good day everyone and welcome to the class GST301. Okay, very quickly we want to look at some topics for this course. The first one is enterprise resource planning. But there is no way we can talk about enterprise resource planning without looking at what exactly is resource planning. We are talking about the process of you identifying identifying the process of you allocating and the process of you managing limited resources effectively for the purpose of meeting specific objectives within an organization we have a business setup we have an organization the end product or the focus the main focus of this organization is to produce x number of phones at the end of the day right so now there are resources that will be needed for that. It's human resources will be there, finance resources, financial resources will be there, capital resources will be there. There might be entrepreneurial resources too, right? So the process is the process of you now identifying those resources, picking a pen and ticking how many of these will I need, right? How much of this will I need? When will I need them? To what quantity, in what quantity will I need them? Which of them is long term? Which of them is short term? The process of you planning all that is what we refer to as resource planning. Now, by definition, it is the process. It is just a process of you identifying. It's a process of you forecasting. It's a process of you allocating. It's a process of you managing limited resources effectively so as to meet specific objectives or goals within an organization okay it's it's more like a process it's determining what resources you need how much of these resources you need when do you need them to how who, who, who is going to execute them and all of that and the hand product is for you to accomplish a particular project or accomplish a task effectively we all know scarcity is key and it's a fact in business world in an enterprise. So in the process, it's a process of you now identifying, okay, how can I cut this one down to maximize profit? How can I cut this one down to maximize profit? So that is what we refer to as resource planning. Now talking about enterprise resource planning now, which I said we require us to talk about resource planning first, right? Enterprise resource planning is, it is a comprehensive software system that integrates key business processes and functions across an organization into a single unified system. Let me give an illustration this way. You want to prepare a meal. Now, the end target, objective, and the goal of your exercise in that organization of cooking is to prepare a meal, right? But you, are, you, 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 you get to a point, you pick a pen, how much of vegetable do I need? How much of meat do I need? How much of fish fish do I need? How much of maggi do I need? How much of oil do I need? How much of gas do I need to cook it? How much of water do I need? Do I have them? Now, which of them can I leave in terms of alternative for gone? Which of them must I use? Which of them can I do without? Okay, which of them will also help me in getting, for instance, I want to prepare a meal that I can see used to take another meal. You understand? So the process of you now planning these different things is what we refer to as resource planning. Now, when we are not talking about enterprise planning, you are now bringing all these, all these plans, you bring them all together in a system. Bringing all of them together in, a, in, 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 in just, just just as I said, the comprehensive software applications in a unified system that you can from a particular system manage all this sec section. For instance, in business world, there is human resources, right? There is a supply chain, right? There is manufacturing, there is customer relations, there is inventory, there is business intelligence and reporting. There are, there are finances, there are accounting, entrepreneurship, and all of that are there. So all this, all, because, you know, in an organization, there is a manager for this, there is a manager for that, there is a manager for this. For example, now in the University of Abuja, as an organization, the 
the target of University of Abuja is to produce graduate, qualified graduate that can compete with the with their contemporary. That's the that's the target. Now, in achieving that, there are processes that are involved, right? Now, one of the processes is that there will, there must be a bursary department that will process or that will manage the financial part of the university. There is a registry part. There is academic academic part. There is a security part, right? Also, for academic staff, that they have their part. Non-academic staff, they have their part. So, unionism and all of that, student unionism and all that. So, all those processes, they have aides. Aide of this, director of this, dean of this, dean of that. And they all work together to help the VC to achieve the sole aim, the singular aim, the singular purpose of University of Abuja as an organization. Now, in a situation where you are now bringing all these people together in a in a comprehensive software system and you are managing them from one solution that solution is called enterprise resource planning enterprise resource planning so from that solution you can indicate okay how many of, how many of these products will i need how many of this capital do i need how can i streamline this okay you can from a singular solution now and another example is our portal on the portal, portal is a modular solution. Modular is solution in the sense that it's a, deep, a compartmentalized solution. It has different parts. Your hand is there, your leg is there, your eye is there. They are all functioning, right? Now, you now have overseers on each of those parts of your body. But at the end of the day, they are, they are, they, there is now a solution that is controlling you, controlling all, the, all, 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 of, all of that part of you, your hand, your eye, your nose, so if we now decide to now put up a solution where we can control all of, of your parts in one solution, that solution we can refer to as an enterprise resource planning. The same thing applies to our portal. When there is a payment, there is a menu you go to. When you need to make registration, there is a menu you need to go to. When you want to check your results, there is a menu you go to. When you need to see your results, I mean your scripts, I mean your, your, your payment receipt, there is a menu you go to. When there is a need for you to change your passport, there is a place you go to. They are all these sections, these modules, they are managing different purposes. And they are all structured under a system, under a, a, a software called uh, in Abuja Integrated Portal, right? So that is what an enterprise if, implies. It's a comprehensive system, a software system that integrates key business processes and functions in an organization into a single unified system. And the major reason is to streamline operations. And as I said before, there is there is a fact in business or in an enterprise, and that is scarcity, right? And the, the sole essence of ERP now, that's enterprise resource plan, is to improve efficiency, is to facilitate quick and easy decision-making process, is to provide a centralized database and tools for you to manage various aspects of your business. So for the key key features usually include mo in modules that are for finance and accounting. So such modules, they, they, they manage the financial uh, transactions like account payable, account receivable, general ledger, and all, all of that. Another feature of it is human resources which handles the employee information, their payroll, their benefits administration, their rec the recruitment processes and all that. Another feature is supply chain management, which manages the flow of goods from procurement to production to distribution and, and all of that. Another is manufacturing, which controls the production processes from the schedule to resource allocation and quality management and all that. Then another one is control relationship management, which is CRM, quite popular. And this one is to track interaction between your organization and the customers. Is to track interactions or manage it's to manage sales leads or to automate marketing campaigns and all of that. Another example is inventory management, business intelligence, and all that, right? That is what we refer to as enterprise resource planning. Right, so and it could be used interchangeably with the with this other word enterprise system, enterprise resource management ERM or business system respectively. Now you can read up on all of these things. 
and it, 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 it should be noted here that eHarp is a whole lot more than a software. Okay, it's a software component though, and it controls all parts of a business enterprise. But it also processes flow, which is with the information from among modules within ERP system. Just as I, as I used University of Abuja portal, for example, the vice chancellor can stay in his office and get to monitor what is happening financially to University of Abuja. He can stay in his office and get to monitor what is happening academically with University of Abuja and the Abuja student. He can stay from his office and monitor what is happening to his staff academic staff and non-academic staff without calling on anybody and all because of the help of the, the, the resource planning software, which is the portal, right? It, 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 co also, it also helps in customer mindset. As I said, customer relations management is one of the features, change management and all of that. Now let's look at the next topic, which is sources of finance and financial li literacy. Just as we said, planning is quite essential. The same thing applies to finance planning, right? So because of that, we'll be looking at the topic sources of planning and financial literacy. Okay, now talking about sources of planning, this has to do with the various ways in which businesses can obtain funds to finance their operations, your investments or your expansion plans. These sources can be broadly categorized into three sources as we have right here internal and external formal sources semi-formal informal and supplementary then seed money right now let's look at internal and uh, internal and external sources first internal and external sources right? these are profits that are gotten into the company to smooth run the company such as retained earnings sales of assets or depreciation profits that a company keeps aside after paying dividends to shareholders or you reinvest it and you have earnings to you it could also be funds that you generated by selling unused or underutilized assets for example your land you sold some machines it could be finances that you got from there those are internal or it could even be a depreciation it's my, this one, we might not even see this one as a, as a direct source of cash, but depreciation allows your business to allocate funds from profits towards replacing or upgrading assets in the future. The next one is external. Example of external ones are like equity finance, debt finance, right? Grants and subsidies, leasing, trade credit, crowdfunding, factoring, peer-to-peer -peer lending, okay? For example, the equity. Equity financing, that, this one involves raising funds by selling ownership stakes in the company, right? Debt finance, financing involves borrowing funds from external sources with obligation to repay, right? Okay. And the grants could be from government, could be from non-governmental organization, and it could also be from other entities that offer grants, okay? For instance, your, your, your business might have to do with something or so, some organizations or some people and you have an interested organization that wishes or that it's interest, in, interested organization that that are that are interested in your operation they now come to you grants you or give you some grants and that one is leasing that is renting assets such as equipment or property for a specific period in exchange for a regular payment and that one is trade credit Suppliers may extend trade credit to your business. They could allow you to, this will allow you to obtain goods and services on credit terms and all of that. The next one could be crowdfunding. All these ones are external sources of finance, right? Now, the next one is seed money. Yeah, on, <clears throat> on the other hand, formal, informal, semi-formal and supplementary sources of finance can also be of help as a source of fund for your organization okay the former one they are established financial institutions or mechanisms through which you can get finances 
for they, they, they definitely will have some rules, some regulations that you follow. Examples are commercial banks. Examples, examples are venture capital firms. It could even be a public stock market. So you get funds from them. That's example of former sources of finance. The semi-formal ones are sources. Those ones, they don't strictly have rules that you must adhere to, but still they operate within formal structure. Example of those are community development financial institutions with their popularly called CDFIs. For instance, microfinance institutions, like you, you all know microfinance banks, right? Government-sponsored financial organizations, they also can fall into this category. The next one is informal sources of income, okay? This one, they involve, it involves obtaining funds from individuals or entities outside traditional financial institutions. M more like borrowing from family and friends. You understand? Obtaining trade credits from suppliers. Or you are utilizing informal savings club, saving clubs. Like business, Lagos business, wherever, then you approach them and they were able to get you some funds and all of that. The last one is supplementary finance, supplementary source of finance. These ones are additional alternative means of obtaining funds that complement primary sources of income. For example, <clears throat> your businesses may use crowdfunding campaigns or your factoring services to supplement your finances. Okay? The, the third one is seed money, debt financing, and equity financing. Now, seed money, this refers to initial capital provided to start a business, to start a new business, or launch a new product. This can come from founders, it can even be an angel investor, so to say, or early stage venture capital firms. And it is typically used to cover initial expenses such as market research, product development, and hiring key you are you have a business from that business you are growing another business so the new business that you are growing gets money from this first one okay seed money you launch a new product start a new business then you get money from the founder okay yeah, yeah take start okay that's what is called seed the next one is debt financing right this involves borrowing funds from external sources with the obligation to repay right the next one is equity financing this which involves raising from from selling ownership stakes and all of that and all of that then <clears throat> from the material you can read from here former former which is semi former informal supplementary bank sources such as overdraft loans projects import finance project loans and all that yeah the next topic we want to look at is financial literacy okay We've been able to look at different sources of finance for an enterprise, right? But when we're talking about financial literacy, this actually refers to your knowledge or your understanding of financial concepts, your knowledge regarding financial principles and the tools which enables you to make informed and effective decisions regarding your savings, your, your finances. This it's cool. it encompasses various aspects of managing money, right? It includes budgeting, saving, investing, borrowing, and planning for the future, right? Financially, finance to be financially literate, it it has to do with being equipped with the skills and confidence to navigate complex financial decisions, situations rather, and to make sound financial choices, which will align with your goal and values just as it is said that you will face to plan plan to fail you have a target you have a goal your finances are limited you cannot just have it all now your capacity to navigate through the scarcity through the limited resources through the limited finances and tailor it to your goal tailor them to your goal towards achieving your goal and getting the, the goal achieved at the end of the day the skill the knowledge you need to manage all those financial concepts, the principles and all that, that is what we refer to as financial literacy, okay? We've looked at different sources of finance for, for, for our enterprise, right? Now, how to manage this, that brought about this, the next topic, which is financial literacy. Now, financial literacy has to do with your knowledge 
and understanding of financial concepts, principles, and tools, which enable individuals or a business or an enterprise to make informed and effective decisions regarding their personal finances or regarding their enterprise finances. It actually encompasses various aspects of managing money, which include investing, saving, borrowing, budgeting, and as well as planning for the future. If financially literate individuals are equipped with the skills and confidence to navigate complex financial situations, and this as well include enterprise, which will help them to make sound financial choices, which we align with their goal and values. We also, I always say in the context of this course that the, 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 the key thing, and the static thing, the permanent thing is limited resources that we have. Your finances can never be enough, right? So you must manage, you must manage. That's brought about the financial literacy. The, your knowledge of how to manage your finances, the principles that you, you are using to manage your finances, your, the principles you are using to allocate accordingly and rightly, efficiently to, uh, towards achieving a particular or to, to maximize the, finance, the finances you have, that is, where, that is what we are referring to as financial literacy. Okay? Now, there are issues in financial literacy that we will be looking at. You can read through the content, the content here, okay? Number one issue we are looking at is your needs, the difference between needs and wants. Needs and wants, they are quite synonymous, but they are different. When we are talking about needs, they are necessities and they are essential for survival. They are essential for your well-being. They are essential to maintain a basic standard of life. For instance, as a business, there are basic things that you can't just do without. You can't tell me you are having a, a, you, are, you are having an enterprise, and you wouldn't bother about capital. Set apart your capital. Then, how do you want to finance it? Who are the sources of your? What will be the sources of your finance? All of those things, they are things, they are, they are needs, the skills that are needed. You must have them. And now, talking about the the the. the the real deal, which is you now having laying hold of what you need to smooth run your businesses. For example, financial implications for you to establish your businesses. Oh, I need a land. Oh, I will need a car because my business has to do with a car. And it's not something that's because my end target, my target uh, market, they are not within this locality. You will need a car. Those are needs. Those are needs for you to start your business. Now, the financial implication of this, meeting these needs should be the financial, I mean, should be the primary focus in our budgeting, especially as an enterprise. In our financial planning, we should put them as a focus. That's, that comes to your staff too. Take care of them. They must be in sound mind before they can do excellently well in the, play, in the work that you are giving them. Now, the connection of this with financial literacy is that you are recognizing and prioritizing the needs over wants because you need these things to smooth run your business. You need this to run your business, to manage your business effectively. Now, financially literate enterprise understand the importance of meeting needs first and allocating resources accordingly to ensure financial stability and, and, and security. On the other hand, when we're talking about on the other hand, when we are talking about wants, right? Wants are desires and preferences that are not necessary for survival, but they add comfort, enjoyment, and fulfillment to your enterprise or to your life. These are items or experiences that people seek beyond basic necessities. Let me put it this way. They are jara on whatever you have gotten. You can't give me rice now, Okay. And I, I was so hungry before coming in. And what I'll be requesting for is, give me meat, give me meat, give me meat after you have given me rice. That means I'm not hungry, okay? Because that meat is just a want. I am hungry, I will go first for the rice. In terms of enterprise, wants can vary widely 
among individuals and the, this may include luxury luxury items entertainment vacations as individuals now dining out or hobbies and all of that you must be able to manage your wants manage it in such a way that you focus first on the need before you start talking about wants okay that is one key concept that we are looking at under this financial literacy the next one we are going to look at is financial planning and budgeting financial planning and budgeting yeah planning involves decision on what to do in the future and how to do it which is actually the reason we say that a manager who fails to plan plans to fail planning can be defined as a process of setting goals and objectives in advance and determining ways of achieving it you are planning for something that has not come real today you are in school right now okay but your capacity to make plan for the future now will set you apart from others will set you ahead of others you are in the school your primary reason of coming to school is to just go to class attend lectures do your assignment do your exam and all of that but you now for once thought about it in abuja graduated how I many number of students few few months ago a few weeks ago these guys are going back to the labor market a day will come that i will be part of them what will make me special among others okay i think i need to start learning skills what are the skills i need to start learning let me go online and start searching for skills that are in high demand that is planning okay you are not yet there but you are planning tomorrow today okay so that is what we are talking now when we are talking about finance planning it's your capacity of setting goals creating strategies and making decisions to manage your financial resources effectively your capacity to look at the short term and the long term financial implications of what you are doing your capacity to look at the short term and the long term financial objectives your capacity to forecast the future financial performances of your business using the current data or current market conditions okay financial literate businesses they understand the importance of this strategy to achieve their objectives they develop comprehensive financial plans that align with their overall business strategies taking into account factors such as revenue projections cost management investment priorities and risk mitigation strategies you put plans in place okay this is going to happen this may happen in the future what are we going to do okay we are facing election period what's going to happen should this election lead to this what are we going to do should this election lead to this how are we going to sustain our business should this so that is what planning implies so okay components of finance, financial planning include setting financial goals conducting financial analysis and forecasting developing budgets and allocating resources you evaluate your investment opportunities you are you're managing your cash flow and liquidity liquidity assessing and managing financial risk okay now on the other hand budgeting is the process of creating a financial plan that outlines projected revenues process of creating a financial plan that outlines projected revenues expenses and cash flows for a specific period you are here projecting by may we are able, if we are able to get this this is what we are going to do if we are, that is what budget is all about but planning you are planning today you are planning tomorrow today okay let's take this step so that we will not incur this problem in the future okay let's allocate this so that we will be able to make this in the future that is financial planning now budgeting is on the basis of the projected revenue on the basis of projected expenses on the basis of projected cash flows for a specific period you are creating a financial plan it involves estimating income and expenses you set targets 
you benchmark and you monitor actual performances against budgeted am am amounts. Okay, what's the importance? It's a fundamental tool for financial literacy in an enterprise as this helps businesses to manage their finances effectively. It helps them to control costs and it helps them to track financial performances. A very well designed budget will enable businesses definitely to allocate their resources in a strategic way and it helps them also to prioritize their spending. Okay? It helps them to make adjustments in their spendings where necessary and this will help, definitely help them to achieve their financial goals. Okay? That's the next concept. So the next one we are going to look at is record keeping and cash flow management. Record keeping now. To be successful, records of income and expenses of an enterprise must be kept for each and every transaction. This cannot be overemphasized. And of course, for every organization, this is properly done, right? Otherwise, you, won't, you can't stand the test of time. You must manage your finances. This ranges from the 10 naira that was given to the garbage packer to the 100,000 naira that was given out for the purchase of sets of furniture. You put all of this on record. Now, it is imperative to note that businessman doesn't have the right to take anything away from the businesses without payment. You don't just dip your hands straight into your businesses and pull out money. And that is the reason we are talking about financial literacy in this course. You have a business. You don't see it as a family business where, where there is a need for indomie. You go to the counter, you pick the indomie. Who is going to pay for it? Nobody. After all, God has given us. God will bring another one. That's not how to run a business. Okay? Note this, and with seriousness, the person who operates a computer business center must pay the five naira chargeable for one page photocopy that was done for his personal document. Yo, I need I need to go submit a document at CAC. Let me to run a photocopy. You must pay for it. Let it go to the company because it's a service that has been rendered by the entity, your business, to you. Then you pay for it. So if you keep your record that same way, you that is what we call record keeping. Okay? Now, on the other hand, talking about cash flow management. Cash flow management involves monitoring, analyzing, and optimizing the inflow and outflow of cash within your business. Effective cash flow management will help you and it ensures that your business can meet financial obli obligations as they come. By maintaining adequate liquidity, the company can, your company can avoid short cash shortages and all of that. It also helps you to plan and to forecast. It also helps your working capital management, optimizing your cash flow, managing uh, working capital components, for example, account receivable, account payable, your inventory levels, and all of that. Okay? And what are the strategies for cash flow management? Okay? You implement effective invoicing. You negotiate favorable payments, not exorbitant, not because you, you're able to eat a particular contract so you, you start spending anyhow. Monitoring and controlling expenses to reduce unnecessary costs. You maintain an appropriate cash reserve for emergencies and con or contingencies and all that. The next one we are going to look at under financial management is savings and borrowings. Generally, in financial literacy, Issue of savings and borrowings are considered both from the angle of an enterprise and that of the household. Savings, by the way of plowing back a substantial portion of your revenue of the enterprise, it is mandatory for, you, for a person to ensure that the revenue of your enterprise is securely kept. This is advised to be by conscious use of financial institutions such as commercial bank. How much were you able to make from this business today? Go and save it. How much were you able to make today? Go and save it. So consciously you are managing your finances, savings. Save them almost every day, consciously and with discipline. How much were you, were, did you spend this year? So how much were you able to get? Now, 
what is left at the end being the dividend, you go save it. Why savings in this context is what is plowed back into the business. You, you have savings from your business, you put it back into your business, the dividends, maybe your, the, the owner of the business keeps it or you plow it back into the business or you go use it to establish another business. So savings, setting aside a portion of your revenue now or profit for future use or investment. So you, you, you have, you are accumulating these funds for the purpose of meeting a short-term obligations or on unexpected expenses or to, to finance future growth of your business. And the essence of this is that it will help you in, in, in the period of economic downtime because you've, you've gotten yourself some savings. Now, the dividends at, at the same time, when they come to you, you've got, you have them set apart possibly to, to your entrepreneur, but it can plug it back into the business, into the enterprise at the odd time, odd time instead of at the bad business time, okay? For the purpose of growth and expansion, the person may need to take money from outside finance resources. We've looked at different financial sources, okay? Now, this finance from other sources is this is called borrowing. Now, the next one is risk management. In virtually all endeavors of life, there is risk. There is there is risk, okay? Because as an entrepreneur, it is expected of you to take risk. In fact, that sets you apart from just mere talkers. Each person is expected to take calculated risk. It's not about taking risk in businesses. It's about taking calculated risk. This means that you've done proper analysis and due diligence before you go out, out to take the risk. Okay, you don't just take a risk. Clear the cost first. Channel the cost. Okay, if I take this, what if this comes out? What if this comes out? So after you've been able to harness all of this and then you go all out to take the risk. That's by taking time to do proper analysis before venturing to any businesses. There's, there is yet some other risks that are not always visible to humans. That's the reason we say that you should take risk and calculated ones. You can read a whole lot. The next one we're going to look at is consumer rights and responsibilities. You must know what are the rights, the privileges, your responsibilities, what are the do's, what are the don'ts, your customers even, what are their rights, not just your own rights now. What are the rights of the customers? The recent issue happening between Erisco and all of that, you see the, the how that the customer assumes she was right to make a review. Now the company came back hunting for her. You see, customer rights is being infringed. So that is what we are talking about. You must know the ambit of your rights. Now let's back to the man. This is not unconnected with the fact that enterprise is sure to continue to continue to remain in business and equally expand when customers are at least relatively satisfied with the product or the services rendered to them by the enterprise. This is where the saying customer is the king emanates from. Just like the example I give every school, you see the, the way the, the game is going and you see the effect that is having on the company right now. None of them is fine. The company is done for. Why the person that did the review is also going through a whole lot, right? And as an individual, I would have told you that the company was wrong. They could have used that, that scenario to their strength. But it is a situation that has to do with consumer rights, the responsibility of the, the company and, and, and also all of that. Now, ask all financial management, Household, fin household financial management. This has to do with you, how you 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 separate business from. I mean, you separate business from families, you separate business from non-business expenses. Okay, this has to do with you separating the cost of business from your family. In financial literacy, persons are encouraged to be conscious of household financial management as much as they are conscious of the business financial management. It is important to look at this for the fact that reckless spending by the household may affect the business. By the way, how would you be spending business money? Just as we have said before, in when you are giving to yourself, you are giving from the business and you must give accordingly. Recall that it was mentioned in this segment under the discourse of savings and borrowing is that borrowing by the person from the business is not illegal. Okay? 
All persons are expected to do proper planning and budgeting for their households and live within their income for their own personal happiness as side business survival. The next one is taxes and levies. The consciousness of taxes and taxable items, you need the knowledge as well for your financial literacy. You need the knowledge of this. Before delving into the business activity, you need to know whether or not all or part, whatever, is subjected to tax. And if so, the tax must be rightly paid. Because this is also going to inform your pricing. It's going to inform your revenue. It's going to inform the, your, the, 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 the expenses in terms of the salary or the wages you are going to give us, okay? When you get to know the tax, then you know how much to levy or to put on, the, on, on, on your product. In some other realms, the activity of the, of, of the, of the, the, in the activities of the enterprise may be taxable, but tax obligation is to commence only. You need all this knowledge, okay? The next topic we want to look at is why do we need financial literacy? I will touch that in the second part of this video, which will be held in, in few this time. So I will I, I, I really appreciate you coming those far because I don't want it to be up to one hour. It we are almost one hour now. Thank you for listening to the video and please like and comment, subscribe. Thank you.